Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. I'm still battling man flu at the moment, but it has given me this gravelly, whispering Bob Harris, our radio voice. So, hey, every cloud, right? (laughs) On the show, we do feature everything from the smallest bootstrapping tech startups to the biggest names in tech. But one thing I can assure you is that no matter who the guest is, we will get to hear their story and and highlight how it doesn't matter where you listen to the show in 160 plus countries, we are all ultimately the same. We share the same dreams, the same challenges and hopefully the same opportunities too. Now today's guest has a fantastic story and is now living the life of a digital nomad or should I say that he is location independent. So imagine being able to work anywhere with just a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection. That is so incredibly appealing to me. Remember those old movies or TV shows where this drifter went from town to town with just a guitar on his back? That's what I want, but the reality is it's more like a laptop bag with a podcast mic inside, which is probably not quite as cool as I imagine it. But enough of me. Today's guest is going to share his experiences of how to add value in the world of entrepreneurship. As I said a few moments ago, today's guest does get around a little, so buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Southeast Asia today so we can speak with Tom Leibelt from We Create Online Courses. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Who I am? Uh, Just the regular guy. (laughs) (laughs) You you and me both. (laughs) Yeah. What I do, um, I got a couple of businesses. I, I do uh, marketing through smart brand marketing, so SEO funnels conversions. Uh, we create online courses, and that's actually the .com too. We create online courses.com. So we take experts and authors and, and speakers. Uh, we get on the phone with them, and it takes about 14 hours of their time, and we create a course out of all their info. So we do all the heavy lifting. And then I got a couple of hobby projects uh, that I do too. But yeah, that's pretty much pretty much it. Now I read that when you were a small boy, you wanted to be an astronaut, and then I want so I want to take you back in time to find out more about where this story began and, and this journey <laughs> of entrepreneurship. So can you tell the listeners about when you were seven years old, laying back on the seat of a car, <laughs> and where your entrepreneurial story began? Well, so let's um, let's tackle the astronaut thing first. Yeah. Um, I I grew up in Eastern Europe. Um, and it was still quite locked down uh, under the Soviets in Poland when I was little. So um, I had a lot of fun, but um, things were not as nice and and friendly as in the West, right? Like, for example, when I went to the dentist, no numbing at all, right? So Ooh. teeth were just coming out right on. Yeah. So if you can imagine a, a small kid like me with a family in the West, I wanted to fly away somewhere, right? And my mom says the main thing was I kept on looking at space, you know, so I I think I just wanted to get out of there. So my dad used to go to Germany and Sweden and and some of the Western countries to do business. So, for example, he would go um, bring back VCRs and things like that, which were super expensive in Poland, um, kind of smuggle them back in and then sell them for crazy prices to... uh, well, even to the government and the schools, like they would, those were the best buyers. They had all the money. Um, but yeah, so one time when we were going, I was super little. Um, he was bringing some kind of moonshine type vodka uh, behind the seats, which you're not supposed to take to Germany back then. <laughs> and he, t- he told me, lay on the back seat. When they stop, just act like you're sleeping. If they try to get you out, start crying and screaming so that they don't go into the seat too much. Um, so well, that's what happened. We got stopped. Uh, the the Germans did drag me out of the car, but I was making enough noise where they kind of did a half-ass job, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with the seat, and I went right back in, and we were off to <laughs> off to our uh, on our adventure. Um, and then when he brought them back, uh, we would go to the stadiums, the soccer stadiums, on the weekends, and I would help him sell this stuff. And you can imagine, you know, you learn a lot yeah. through that type of a hustle. You know, even as a kid, I was hustled all the time. I went to the Russians to buy some comic books. They were almost mind readers. They knew which book I wanted. They always tripled the price. It was, you know, it was just very bad for me. I always lost. But, <laughs> but yeah, the, the beginning was a lot of hustle. 
I was going to say that. I mean, looking back, and if you join up the dots, did your journey set the scene and plant that seed, do you think, to follow a dream where you were a complete digital nomad and genuinely just location <clears throat> independent? Do you think that's where it all, all began? Everyone's a dream. Uh, when I was first leaving the country and even the people before me, everyone's dream was to make money in the West. So wherever it is in America and then either come back or just be able to live wherever they want to. But for most people, it was just a simple dream, right? I wish I could make money in America and live in Poland. That was like the main dream from everyone that I knew. But obviously now it's more like I can make money in the States and live wherever I want to, right? So it's like we're at a whole different level. But, you know, that's because of the technology to like the banking, right? I can use my ATM anywhere, my credit card. It's super easy for me to live wherever I want to. Um, But, yeah, that was a dream, you know, and I thought that was doing something original but my dad's like shit i've been trying to do that since i was little you're just luckier than me that's all he's been saying <laughs> <laughs> love it now i'm quite conscious i mean do you think there might be a lot of people listening now that are institutionalized still or feeling that way checking in and out of the office listening to podcasts like this on their commute from hell every day and just living for the weekend and if so to anyone that is listening, going through that, I mean, where can they start to make changes and leverage the opportunities that technology brings that will make living life from a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection in any location possible? I mean, how, where would you begin to do that? You know, I, I was at the same level as the ones listening to it, thinking that now when I when I got to the West and I went through schooling and everything, and I, you know, I dealed and did other things, like had a little store, um, but I did finish some schools. I did start the corporate journey. Right. So I did find myself sitting in a car because I was doing outside sales and thinking like I am wasting my life away. I am working for some shitty money. I'm a number in this company. And like I lost the dream, like I I lost it. Right. So, for example, when I went to work for Nestle, because I was switch companies a lot um, and I told them like, oh, cool, you know, maybe you guys can move me to a department in a different country because I was still hoping, you know, maybe I can make the money like the West money and, and move him, move myself somewhere else and live like a king, right? But then they said, yeah, 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 during the interview. But then when I asked, when I started working, it's like, ah, oh, no one does that, you know? <laughs> so once again, <laughs> I was like, okay, the four-hour work week, I don't know how that came across my lab, but I was sitting in a car and I just grabbed that book and I started reading through it. And yeah, a bunch of it was nonsense, right? Like the guy sold the company before he wrote the book and um, some of the things just didn't make sense, like for me. But that whole idea that seed was planted again, right? Like, we, yes, the technology is there. We can do that now. Why am I sitting here like an asshole for a monthly paycheck? And, yeah, I was always looking towards to the weekend, but, you know, how weekends go, right? Yeah. You, you start enjoying your Saturday or Sunday. By the time you actually relax, it's almost Monday. Yeah. Right? Like, to the end of Sunday, you're just like, oh, I'm finally relaxed. But, you know, got to wake up tomorrow morning. I'll tell you what I did. I, I hate giving advice because, you know, everyone can do that. I'll, I'll tell you what I did. Yeah. I was selling really well at a company. Um, I was doing outside sales, so not much people watching over me. And I just stopped working. And I started messing around on the internet, right? So I just stopped completely. And everyone was like, oh, what's happening with your sales? I was like, I don't know. They'll pick up. They'll pick up any time now. So for three months, they were still paying me my full salary, hoping my sales would pick up. Right. And at the end, they still didn't know what was going on. So they changed my regions to a better region. And a month later, they're like, Tom, um, if you want to quit, just quit. And I said, no, I will never quit. You have to fire me. So the reason for that is to get my unemployment. So they fired me and I had a six month more runway to build up my business. Right. So that's nine months total. Yeah. And that's what that's that's what I did. And I got actually luckier back then because unemployment was so bad for everyone, which it wasn't their fault. I actually wanted to be unemployed. Yeah. That unemployment was extended for almost six months extra. It was like an emergency thing. So in total, I had about 15 months paid for to start a business. Wow. So it's like the planets were aligning and everything just fall into place for you there, didn't it? Yeah. Those last six months were completely unexpected. Um, but I welcomed them with open arms. I was like, okay, I have more runway now. And I was making enough to pretty much survive. I mean, my company was. I was still not making anything on, on paper, right? Because I yeah. couldn't. I was unemployed. Um, but yeah, the company was growing. And by the time the unemployment finished, I was 
making just the same with the company. So what have been your biggest challenges that you've encountered along the way when you were building that business? And essentially, how did you overcome them too? The biggest one was overworking myself. Yeah. So I tried to do everything on my own, um, even though I did have experience from before and I tried to hire people, but I was still the bottleneck, you know? Yeah. Um, taking on bad partners just because I wanted things to to grow quicker, you know, and saying yes to too many things. Those were the main main problems. And you know, how do you overcome them? Well, you got to figure out that you can't do everything yourself. You know, you you do have to build up a team that can think for themselves. Um, you do have to bring someone into that management position. You know, so so have them hire fire people and kind of just tackle the day-to-day day things. Um, with partnerships, I'm getting better, but I'm still not great at it. Um, I always feel like when people ask you, oh, let's partner up on this, it's like getting married, you know? Yeah. And for the most part, my response now is, you know, you don't want to get married to me. Just think of me as a prostitute, <laughs> as a high-end escort. Just just hire me out, you know? We'll have fun, and then I go home. <laughs> so that's one way of just kind of breaking that ice where people like, you know, for example, with SEO or with courses, they'll be like, oh, can you help me with the website or can you build a course and we're partner up on this? And it's just, it doesn't work well. You know, it's, it's really like getting married and I don't want to get married to all these people, you know? <laughs> you get arrested if you did, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Some of, the, some of the countries or maybe states, I think Utah... Uh, in America, I don't know. They have many wives, so I mean, I, really. Oh, I, there's a whole no, another episode waiting for us right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me just get into that last one. That's saying no thing. Yeah. Uh, what I do now is I basically put a amount of money on time. So one of my hours is basically worth around a hundred dollars, and anything that comes across, I'm like, is this worth it? You know, so I can actually see it. Think of a hundred dollar bill. Is it worth for me to be working on this now or? watching this episode now or going into this meeting now because I'm losing $100. So what's the ROI? That's the fastest way for me to say no to things. Ah, oh, that's a great incentive to stop you to sit around on the playing video games or watching Netflix all afternoon as well, isn't it? That's, that's a $100 show right there. <laughs> oh, dear. Ah. So here we are in 2018. Uh, so what are the top three things that you're working on inside your company now? What's your big focus where that $100 an hour is going? So one of the companies I have is a publishing company. Um, and we've, we have a big team. Uh, we've published over 5,000 books on Amazon, Kindle, CreateSpace, um, a lot. It's been going on for a couple of years. It's not, not a new company. Yeah. Um, but my main thing is, even though it makes money and it's growing, is to move away from Amazon. Um, I've had problems with Amazon. I've had problems with Google, with my SEO company. And the biggest, biggest motivators for me now is to be completely not relying on any of these companies. So to, to create my own platforms and move away from them as much as possible. That's the main goal um, that I can think of right now that I'm working on, just to get away from anything like that. You know, Facebook, if they mess up their advertising, you're done. Yeah. Um, AdWords, same thing. SEO, same thing. You know, it's just a lot of these companies have too much power and you cannot rely on them with your business. So even though I have multiple businesses and I'm not as hit when something happens, I still hate that feeling, you know, like I, I went from working for one boss to being an employee of another bigger asshole. Yeah, it's so true what you're saying. And I, it was only about five years ago that so many companies actually ditched their own website in their own space with their own rules to set up on Facebook. And now they're left with nothing, aren't they? Basically, you know, yeah. um, even with the crypto space. Yeah. You know, for a long time, all the ICOs were getting money from advertising on Facebook. And then Facebook one day wakes up and say, oh. It's illegal now. And what's funny, it's not just that it's illegal. They're looking back at companies that used to advertise in crypto when it was legal like one or two years ago and still banning them for that. So if there is anyone listening to your story today that's inspired by what you've achieved, I know you said you don't like giving advice. What kind of what is the best piece of advice that you've learned along the way that you could pass down to add a little adventure to their own life? This is a little counterintuitive and it's something one of my friends kind of nailed into my head and it's you have to plan your fun activities when you run a business yeah. because business will overtake your life you know and we're and we're so good at doing all these different tasks and planning to-do lists for our business and just working ourselves to death but you know what almost nobody ever schedules fun time like when is the last time you had 
one day per week for fun things and you actually schedule them, had a to-do list just like you did for your business. Yeah, it doesn't happen. <laughs> it's that $100 an hour thing that pops in again, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, your health and yeah. your ability to re- regenerate and, and kind of restart, refresh yourself, that's worth a lot too. But the thing is, if you don't plan them, yeah. you really do waste the time. This is when a shit like that happens. You play video games, you watch Netflix. Yeah. You get on Facebook. You didn't plan anything. So one of my friends, like, he plans his fun activities, and he's been really nailing that down. And I'm, you know, I was really bad at it. So I'm, I'm also trying to do that now too, is to plan these mini vacations and and things we will do. So we'll let's say if we go to Taipei for a, for a week, um, we'll ask everyone we know for all the best restaurants. And that's going to be our to-do list. You know, stuff we do in between is just fun. We, we see other things, but this is like, okay, we're going to enjoy great food for like a week. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with it. I do very similar because I have to go to the States a lot to cover various tech events. So in a couple of weeks, I'm going to Denver for a no longer virtual conference, which I'm really looking forward to. But once that's done, I'm then going to go out and check out the flat irons in Boulder, Colorado and stop at the Stanley Hotel where Stephen King wrote The Shining and do some crazy stuff as well. And I think it's so important that you are right in what you say there. Just to, Yes, you do the work, but then you're also scheduling that fun time. You've got to get that balance right, haven't you? I'm not even sure if it's balanced because if you're running a successful business, you will never be balanced. Yeah. All I'm saying is you just need to take some time off for yourself so you don't burn out because that's the easiest thing to do in business is just burn yourself out. Then you start getting unmotivated. You start getting sick. You don't pay attention as much. Your creativity is gone. It actually hurts your business a lot. That's why you have to plan these things. Now, your team has published over 5,000 books, you were saying a few moments ago as well. And that's an incredible achievement on its own. But can you tell me more about how you've done that and why others listening should actually write a book as well? There's another great move that they could make to improve their brand. So what happened is when, I think maybe four or five years ago, back when um, blog networks were going strong, and blog networks was basically people would buy up a lot of different websites, um, and they would accept your articles and you would write an article based on your niche. You would put it up on a blog and you would backlink it back to your website. So we would publish hundreds of these per week for ourselves and clients. And at one point, Google said, we don't like these anymore. And once again, it's this thing, right? Google makes a decision and all of these blog networks pretty much went down. So now I had this team of writers of about 14, 15 people who had nothing to do. And I I was running other businesses and I said, well, I, I don't want to fire these guys. This team is incredible. So I told them, look, let's just change strategies. Uh, we were writing on so many different niches in the blogs, start looking at these niches, let's create some templates and start posting books up on the Kindle. And within a couple months, we were up to about 100, 150 books uh, per month that we were posting. So the team really embraced it. And I, I did help them out a little bit with the templates. And I, I was doing maybe a day a week researching niches and just trying to get the strategy right. But, I mean, they, they kind of figured this out. And, and they understood, like, look, we don't figure it out. We're going to get fired. So and I gave them a couple months runway. I was like, look, you at least got to replace some of this income. Pay for yourself. And, and they did that. So once the team was running and the management really understood what they had to do, um, you know, they hired people on staff to write, to create templates, to edit, um, to create the covers and to upload stuff to the Kindle. So it was a self-reliant team and it really still is. So as a digital nomad, I'm sure you're going to be monitoring tech trends. So I've got to ask, I mean, what tech trends are exciting you this year and how are you planning on leveraging them? Because I, I think part of the... Uh, joy and beauty of running your own business and not being lo- and being location independent is you can adapt and evolve along the way and your plan is continuously changing isn't it yeah so um ai is obviously super interesting to me especially the companies that are figuring out how to get ai to just write yeah. things on their own I, mean, I can only imagine if i had like a super computer ai we could probably pump out ten thousand books in a month you know, because this thing would never stop. You just fi- have it figure out how to um, find good niches and just write on them. So AI is super interesting. And I'm looking at some of the companies. Um, nothing's great yet, but, you know, um, there are advances in that. And obviously crypto. Um, the whole thing with crypto is just that it's such a new thing. And blockchains by themselves 
are so interesting to me, the whole decentralizing of um, social networks and other things that I, I created a podcast for that called Crypto Moon Radio. Um, and I'm just talking with so many people, you know, from hedge fund guys to developers, just to try to figure out if I can bring some value into that field. Absolutely. That whole space is just set to explode. I mean, it, oh, it already has been doing. It has been a, a rough couple of weeks for anyone holding coins, but I think it's on the up again. But it's no doubt it's going to transform multiple industries, is it? I, I just don't. There's so many people that are pretending it's not going to do that, but there's no doubt it is, is there? Yeah, you mentioned currencies, and I'm actually against trading in crypto. Yeah. Um, obviously, we all make some easy money with it, but it's not the point of the, of the whole thing. Sure. So that's just kind of one of these things that went off on its own and eventually it'll, it'll stop. Yeah. Um, once we do have two or three super stable coins, there's not going to be any point to this trading nonsense. Um, once the regulations come in and people figure out um, how to sell these tokens and securities and ICOs won't be able to pump and dump and just leave and you know people will be held responsible, there will be real, real ways of utilizing this. I mean, one of them, imagine having a decentralized Facebook, a social network, um, with its own tokens, which are worth however much. And every time you post something on there, you get some some money. So Mark Zuckerberg doesn't get to keep whatever value he's getting from you. You actually get value from everything you post. There are so many ways of this being used, um, real estate transactions and others where, yeah, I, I medical, a lot of government stuff. Yeah, there's a big future you know in front of us, except right now everyone's focusing on the currencies, which, yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's a little gambling, but... You know, I'm. I don't think that's what crypto is for, and I'm not really pro uh, trading. No, I completely agree with it. It should always be about the technology. You know, any of these things that people are pumping and dumping. Have a look at the white paper. Don't just believe some shrill on a Reddit forum. It's about doing your own research. And is this actually solving a problem? Because that's where the value is. Well, a huge thank you for coming on today. Before I do let you go, can you remind the listeners of your website details, your social channels, and also how anybody listening can just reach out to you guys if they have any questions? Yeah, sure. Um, you can find me on smartbrandmarketing.com. There's a contact page. Just contact me. I respond to everyone. We have the other business. Uh, we create onlinecourses.com um, if anyone wants a course. And if you're interested in crypto for some reason, then just listen to cryptomoonradio.com and you'll be along the journey just as I am trying to figure this whole thing out. Fantastic. Well, again, a huge thank you for coming on. You've had a, an inspirational story there. And I'm just thinking about that seven-year-old lying on the back seat of the car. <laughs> and, and here you are now, completely uh, location independent. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. And it's like everything that you experience in life shapes your future. And that's what you've done and continue to grow. So it's a great story and a big thank you for coming on. Cheers. I mean, thank you for having me on. The more I record these shows, I'm increasingly fascinated by how we're all influenced by our upbringing and how it shapes our future destiny. Tom's journey began as a seven-year-old laying on the back seat of a car and learning the hustle from his dad. So many big learning curves followed, but that yearning for a better life and not just settle by clocking in and out every day is something that I found incredibly attractive by startup life too. But hey, it's bloody hard work too, and certainly no walk in the park. So don't go thinking it's an easy life either, but being the master of your own destiny ultimately makes it all worthwhile. Right, I've held it together without sneezing or coughing, but I'm not going to tempt fate. So I'm going to make myself a hot lemon and prepare for tomorrow's podcast. So keep those messages coming in, gang. You can tweet me at Neil C. Hughes, email me at techblogwriter at outlook.com. You can get all the episodes over at my site, techblogwriter.co.uk slash podcast. And as I've got this gravelly radio voice, I almost feel, what was that old show with Gary Coleman? Can anybody remember what it was called? If you can, email it me across now because it's going to drive me insane. All I remember about the show is it was Gary Coleman as a a radio show host, and every episode ended with him going, Good night, America, wherever you are. <laughs> Anyone that remembers that show name, message it me over and put me out of my misery. But that's it today for me, gang. I'm going to go get some good old-fashioned R&R now. But until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.